Hello, today we are going to inform you about Linaro Ubuntu. We will discuss what Linaro is and why we need it. But before then, we want to speak about the background history of why it was needed to create Linaro. For that case, we want to discuss what operation systems are nowadays used, what is Linux and what subsystems does it have, what is ARM and Sync processors, and then we will be ready to understand why we need Linaro. So we will start understanding the core principles of Linaro and what we need to use it. At the end of our presentation, we will evaluate Linaro's advantages and disadvantages and whether or not it's worth of such much attention. Uh, today, many different versions of Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and mobile operation systems are available. So what is the most popular operating system? According to all of the state count global state reports, as of April, 22 Windows 10 is the most popular desktop computer operating system. However, if you also include mobile devices, Android is the most popular operating system globally. Most popular operating systems by computers are Windows 10, Android, and iOS. But the most important, we will want to discuss about Linux. Windows 10 is the most popular operating system for desktop and laptop computers. Android is the most popular smartphone operating system. iOS is the most popular tablet operating system. But uh, variants of Linux are most widely used in the Internet of Things and smart devices. Other variants of Linux are most popular operating systems on web services and supercomputers. Now let's discuss Linux and its distribution. Uh, Linux Mint is a, a stable, robust, elegant, and Ubuntu-based distribution. One of the reasons behind its popularity is the fact that up until version 20, it includes out of the box a lot of useful software. However, this ends with version 18, leaving up up to the users to install those packages after the operating system is up and running. To make it clear, it's not that Linux Mint has discounted support for multimedia code and other software it shipped with up until not too long ago. Uh, now let's speak about Debian. With more than 27 years in the Linux ecosystem, Debian stands out for its robustness, stability, and well load release cycles. In addition, it distributed with a large number of available packages and one of the top choices for servers. The current stable release will be replaced by Debian 11 around mid-2021. There are no signals of Debian reverting back to the old system as the default systems and process manager. Now let's speak about the Ubuntu. For those individuals and companies who require professional support from a distributor creator, Ubuntu stands out. Also, professional help is available under a support contract. Ubuntu has a large user base and the community support is outstanding as well. In addition, Ubuntu is available both in desktop and server editions and is based on Debian. It's also a rock solid operating system. The long term support additionally have guaranteed support for five years and their release date. Now, let me speak about what is Linux and what operation systems um, does it have. So, uh, Linux is an operating system or a kernel distributed under an open source license. Its functionality is, uh, is quite like Unix. The kernel is a program at the heart of the Linux operating system that takes care of fundamental stuff like letting hardware communicate with software. The Linux operating system is an open source platform. The always gets the system of application and hardware making the associations between all your software as well as the material resources that do all the work. Linux is designed to be <coughs> to be comparable to Unix and has developed from mobile devices to supercomputers to operate on a broad range of hardware. Every Linux-based OS consists of the Linux kernels that continuous hardware components and a set of software programs that cover the rest of the operating system. The operating system contains some prevalent key components among many others, such as the GNU techniques. Bootloader is the software that manages the boots process of your computer. For most users, this will simply be a splash screen that pop-ups and eventually goes away to boot into the operating system. Kernel is the core of the system and manages the CPU, memory, and peripheral device. The kernel is the lowest level of the OS. 
Init system is a subsystem that bootstraps the user space and is charged with controlling daemons. One of the most widely used init systems is system, which also happens to be one of the most controversial. Daemons, these are background services, printing, sound, scheduling, and etc. That either starts up during boot or after you log into the desktop. Graphical server is the subsystem that displays the graphics on your monitor. It is commonly referred to as the X server or just X. Linux has several different versions to suit any type of user. From new users to hardcore users, you will find a flavor of Linux to match your needs. These versions are called distributions. Popular Linux distributions include Linux Mint, Manjaro, Debian, Ubuntu, Antergos, Solus, Fedora, Elementary OS, OpenSUSE. Uh, of course, our focus now is Ubuntu. So now I will talk about uh, what is a uh, linear Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu uh, is a Linux, uh, is a complete Linux operating system freely available with both community and professional support. The Ubuntu community is built on the ideas enshrined in the Ubuntu manifesto. That software should be available free of charge, that software tools should be usable by people in their local language and uh, despite any disabilities and that people should have the freedom to customize the, and alter their software in whatever way they see fit. Ubuntu is shipped in stable and regular release cycles and a new release will be shipped every six months. Every two even years, seven years and Ubuntu long-term support LTS release will be, become available that is supported for five years. The Ubuntu release non-LTS releases are supported for nine months each. Ubuntu is entirely committed to the principles of open source software development. We encourage people to use open source software, improve it and pass it on. Linary, uh, so Linaro is an engineering organization that works on free and open source software, such as the Linux kernel, the GNU compile connection, power management, graphics, and multimedia interface for the ARM family of instructions. So it's a, sets and implementations thereof, as well as for the heterogeneous system architecture. The company provides a collaborative engineering forum for companies to share engineering resources and funding to solve common problems on ARM software. Now, Christina will continue about what is science processor. These days, the progression of the technology enables cutting edge companies to encapsulate different parts of the system into increasingly smaller devices all the way down to a single chip, which added the system on chip uh, concept as electronics world. By way of an example of a SOC, I will explain the thing, uh, 7000 all programmable SOC. It consists of two hard processors, programmable logic, ADC blocks, and many other features all in one silicon chip. Before the invention of Zinc processor, were coupled with a field programmable gate array FPGA, which made communication between the programmable logic PL and processor system PS complicated. The Zinc architecture is the latest generation of Xilinx, all programmable Xilinx system on chip families, companies at dual core ARM context A9 with a traditional FPGA. The interface between the different elements with the async architecture is based on the advanced extensible interface standards, which is called AXE protocol. Before implementing the ARM processor inside the Zinc device, users were using a soft core process such as Xilinx Microblaze. The main advantage of using Microblaze was and remains the flexibility of the processor instances within a de design. On the other hand, the inclusion of high processor in sync delivers significant performance improvements. Also, by simplifying the system to a single chip, the overall cost and physical size of the device are reduced. The design flow for the Zinc architecture has some steps in common with a regular FPGA. The first stage is to define the specifications and requirements of the system. Next, during the system design stage, the different tasks are assigned to implementing in either PL or PS, which is called task partitioning. This stage is important because the performance of the overall system will be dependent on task functions being assigned for implementing in the most appropriate technology, hardware or software. Next, the hardware and software development and testing should be done. Regarding the PL, 
The task is to identify the required functions block to archive the design characteristics and also assemble them as IPS and make the appropriate connections between them. The APU contains two ARM context A9 processor units, each of which generally includes NIL unit, floating point unit, memory management unit, and L1 caches. In addition, the APU also consists of Snoop control and L2 caches. Uh, figure 3 shows the structure of the APU. New, the single instruction multiple data is provided by this unit, which brings major as acceleration of DSP and media algorithms to the main ARM processor. The unit provides accelerations plus the protein point operations. Level first cache, uh, each processor has its own instruction and data caches for storing the instructions and data. MMU, it is possible for translation of the virtual memory address to the physical memory address. Snoop control unit, the interfacing task among processors, L first and L second caches is one of the main tasks of the CSU. Uh, L second cache, it's shared between the two processors that enable them to access the newest update of a variable. Just like other FPGAs, the programmable logic portion of the Zinc COS consists of configurable logic blocks, which contains two slices. Each slice contains four lookup tables, eight flip-flops, and an accompanying switch matrix. Moreover, there are block RAM and DSP slices as well in figure four shows the structure of the peer. Slice. Each slice consists of resources to implement the combinational and sequential circuits. Lookup table to implement a logic function of up to six inputs, RAM, ROM, or shift registers, the LUT as used. Flip-flops. For implementing a one-bit register with present functionality, the sequential element is used. Switch matrix. It provided the connection among the different parts within between the syllabus, as well as other parts of the PL. Field programmable gates, arrays, FPGAs are integrated circuits often of the shelf. Now I am going to discuss it more deeply. They are referred to as field programmable because they provide customers the ability to reconfigure the hardware to meet specific use requirements after the manufacturing process. This allows for feature upgrades and bug fixes to be performed in situ, which is especially useful for remote deployments. FPGAs contain configurable logic blocks and a set of programmable interconnections that allow the designer to connect blocks and configure them to perform everything from simple logic gates to complex functions. Full CO key designs designed multiple processes can be put into a single FPGA device. FPGAs are extremely versatile. They allow developers to test any number of variables after the board is built. When changes are required, new configuration files are transferred onto the device that make new functionality available. This flexibility allows OEMs to shift systems earlier in the design process. Developers design prototypes on FPGA to incrementally measure the design before finalizing it at tape out. FPGAs are often used in commercial applications where there is a need for parallel computer and the requirements are dynamic, such as for telecoms and evicons. Lower price points and other key features make FPGAs the best solution for many use cases, including hardware prototyping to verify digital hardware designs without the upward cost of ACI manufacture, hardware accelerations where implementing parts of algorithms in custom hardware have to speed designs, spec avionics where radiation hardened FPGAs in satellites can review new configure files to execute updates, install new features, or fix bugs without physical access. Nature networks, where the design topologically better fits an FPGA and can accelerate matrix multiplication. Now Levani will discuss what Zinc's processor and Linaro can do together. So oh, the Ubuntu desktop provides a rich graphical environment upon which developers may develop their custom applications required me graphical user interface. This tech tip is intended to enable users to run complex operating system like Ubuntu and Zinc Peta Linux platform. This also demonstrates the compatibility of Zinc to act as a general purpose CPU. The HTRD also supports a few other QT-based video tests which we can safely ignore at this point of time as we intend only to use HDMI interface. Latest based TRD is developed upon Peta Linux platform. 
When Zinc regenerates, you boot it is different from the normal ARM device. Zinc belongs to the secondary auxiliary startup of U-boot, and then the U-boot starts to kernel. It uh, roughly means that there is a mechanism inside of Zinc which cannot be modified. The biggest difference is that U-boot can't be used directly after compiling. You need to use viva.designpl and then use the SDK to synthesize U-boot and PL design files. Finally, the synthesized files is copied to the SD card and start by it. Now I will talk about protocol and description architecture. MHI is a communication, communication protocol used by the host processors to control the communicate with modems over high-speed bus interface like PCIe or shared memory. The MHI protocol has been designed and developed by QCOM Innovation Center for use in their modems like SDX2024. The protocol aims to improve the communication between host processors and external modems. Modem chipsets have become quite complex as they perform several functions, such as downloading the firmware from host processor, controlling the wireless transceivers, receiving and processing the comments from hosts handling multiple network protocols. In order to efficiently control the interrupt with the modem chipsets, MHI provides a, a comprehensive solution as all. Now, Christina, uh, we'll talk about how to build the device free. To build the device free, first you need to install the Linaro on your machine. But when you install the Linaro, you could see that you, you have the TS files in Arc Arm Boot TS Sync Set folder. And this folder should include in desk at 7511.ts file. And this file should include the same file called zinc slash z.ttsi. When you see this file, this means that you can see consoles of what ID does it have. And if you see this, that, that means that you are good. You have installed it proper, properly. And after that, Linux will amount your root file system from the second petition on your SD card. After this process will be done, you can make the device tree in .dts file for the setboard with the same ID which you have in your console. And uh, if you want to run the commands, you should open the terminal. And in terminal, you could write make sync the set at 511.dtp. Uh, we will also link how you can install these features. And if you want to install Linux on your own machine, you can follow these steps and uh, you can open your terminal and install by these commands. And uh, if you follow these rules and you run all the commands, then it will be copied to your SD card as dvt3. And this will be mm -hmm stored in the file called device3.dtp. And after that, you can run your device boot and then you can build the image. And Levani will uh, continue to teach you how you can boot the Im image tree. Understanding these boot and startup processes is important to being able to both on configure Linux and to resolving startup issues. This article presents an overview also put up sequence using the GRU B2 boat leader loader and the startup sequence as performed by system initial initialization system. There are two consequences of events that are required to boot a Linux computer and make it use a boot and startup. The boot sequence starts when the computer is turned on and is completed when the kernel is initialized and system is launched. The startup process then takes over and finishes the task of getting the Linux computer into an operational state. This cover GRU B2 and systemd because they are the current bootloader and initialization software for the most major distributions. Other software options have been used historically and are still found in some distributions. The boot process can be initiated in one of couple ways. First, if power is turned off, turning on the power will begin the boot process. If the computer is already running, a local user including root or an unprivileged user, the user can program it. Mythically, initiate the boot sequence by using the GUI or command line to initiate a reboot. A reboot will first do a shutdown and then restart the computer. Now, Christina will continue about how to test the system. 
If you have already built the device tree and you have already built the boot image, now it's time to test the system to know if everything works perfectly. To do this, insert the SD card into the board and power up the board. After a few seconds, the blue down LED should light up. This means that the B-Stream has been successfully loaded into the system we now start to boot. It's also possible to connect to the serial console by using the onboard UART to US bridge. This allows to monitor the boot process and view debug messages. After another few seconds, the monitor connected to the system will turn on and display the Linux macOS in the top left corner. After that, the Ubuntu desktop system will appear on the screen. The system is now ready to be used. Now let's wait an additional 30 seconds after booting finished, including checking packages. Then we should add USB keyboard and mouse to use the desktop on the HDMI monitor. And then we should start the system with this command power off. Power off is a command to shut the computer by the lin by from Linux terminal. But if you don't know how to use Linux commands, you can just use the GUI and power off by this. Now, uh, Levani will talk about and discuss about exams to be sure how everything works. Uh, if you're already running on your board, previous version of the linear Linux release for Snapdragon 600 processor, you can upgrade your current installation by following the instructions in the section. In order to upgrade the latest release, you must ensure that you are running a previous release that is based on Ubuntu 14.1. The same Ubuntu version that this release supports, if you are unsure about which version of Ubuntu you are running, you can check the corresponding linear Linux release notes, or you can run the following command on your board, LSP release A, uh, for now, the linear Linux release do not support Ubuntu distro version upgrade. When that happens, you need to reinstall the release complete using the instruction in the rest of this release node. If you are running the proper version of Ubuntu, you can proceed with the upgrade. To upgrade your current installation, three main components need to be updated. The boot partition, uh, the root file system partition, and the firmware partitions. In this release, there are no firmware changes. If you have already installed the firmware partition on your board, then you don't have anything else to do. You can ignore the section below called managing the proprietary firmware. We will simply re reuse the cache partition as it is. To upgrade the root file system on the board running of the linear Linux release, please run the following command: sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. Now, Christina will continue about speed of linear. Linaro will work with a growing number of Linux distributions to create regular releases of optimized tools and foundation software that can be used widely by the industry, increasingly compatibility across semiconductors from multiple suppliers. As a result, Linaro's resources and open source solutions will allow device manufacturers to speed up development time, improve performance, and reduce engineering time spent on non-differentiating low-level software. Linux distributions, open source, and proprietary software projects will be benefit from Linaro's investment, with more stable code becoming widely available as a common base for innovation. Freescale is taking a leadership position in shaping the future of consumer electronics by enabling entirely new categories of smart mobile devices based of processors, say Lisa Su, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Freescale Networking and Multimedia Group. Linaro represents an important step forward in developing the ecosystem for these smart mobile devices through so dramatically speed and simplifying software development cycles and leveraging the power and strength of the source community. Now let's discuss pros and cons of Linaro. Um, uh, pros of linear Ubuntu is that uh, it is easy of updating the system and the application is installed on it. It has a variety of high quality applications available, mostly open source and free software. A great security which allows transparency in the use of professional projects, even the most sensitive ones. Ubuntu Linux allows interfaces on desktop machines that are relatively really easy for former Windows users to adopt it. Also, Ubuntu allows smooth updates usually with little downtime, and the user base for Ubuntu is large, which means help it easy, is easy to find. So, cons of this are uh, more agreements with large companies and governments to publicize the system. Uh, 
uh, it uh, also more hardware options with a system pre-installed in the factory. Great uh, support for anti-software privacy laws. Uh, the repository system could be a little better as some of software need is not easily available there. And Ubuntu sometimes does not play nicely or easily with some modern firmware. Some people also report slow responses with newer versions of Ubuntu. Now, Christina will uh, end with alternatives. Now let's finish our presentation with alternative ways of using Linaro. Alternatives of Linaro are Respyen, which is the API Linux for ARM and its official distribution for the Raspberry Pi, LibreLeak, and other code-based solutions, and Multimedia OS for the Raspberry as it turns into a media center, and Chromos on Chromium, as there's the official version of Chromium running on Chromebook, several of which are ARM CCPU or Chromiums of non chromebook users. Hope you enjoy our presentations. If you have any questions, please comment below, and me and Levani will try to answer your questions. Thank you for your attention.